Hey, and we're live. I'm Shane Oglo, uh, Rogue Trader Academy, and there's my partner, Richard, eating. Yeah, I'm, I'm still trying to get the couscous out of my teeth. <laughs> <laughs> we do everything at our desks, like probably most of you do. You know, it's, it's like the full station for life. It's, uh, it's February 29th. You don't get to say that too often. Huh. February 29th. And it's February 29th in the middle of a massive Bitcoin bull run, which you get to say even less often. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Hey, great to have everyone with us. Uh, and once again, if, if you can't hear me, you know, say something in the chat. Regarding the chat, there's a Q&A section. Uh, we're going to have uh, a little a brief session at the end of this call, be about 30 minutes uh, for some Q&A. So you can already see some people rolling into the room. Vladimir, Kor, Jandrea, Soren. Great to see everyone today. Wow, what a, what a week. What a week. Woo, baby. Um, some accounts are doing extraordinarily well. Other ones that were, were a little bit neglected aren't doing, so we got we got to make up for that. But that's okay. You know, it's trading. You know, these things happen. But I've got some kind of exciting news uh, today. And uh, actually, here, let me just uh, – I think I got on the slide here. Uh, no, I don't have it on the slide. Um, well, I'll go through the slide. Then I'll talk about the news. So uh, on the agenda – we're going to do uh, – oh, I do have it on the slide. Yes, 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 I do. I, I, I forgot I updated it. Uh, current market analysis. We're going to take a look at some charts, just take a look at what's going on, give us some general feedback on, you know, price action, all that good stuff. We're going to do some live trading and options book analysis. And what we've done is we've opened up an account specifically for this show, and we're going to do live trading uh, every Thursday, and we're going to go. Uh, it's not just necessarily about trading; it's uh, uh, also about the philosophy and behind what we're doing and why we're making the decisions. You're going to see the tools and the metrics we use. Some are Deribit tools, some are third-party tools, and how we use those together to make decisions. And uh, you know, the topic. I, maybe I jumped the gun a little bit. Maybe the, the topic would have been better for next week, but that's okay. I, I think it's still relevant because there's a lot of FOMO. There's a lot of people saying, oh, man, I wish I would have got in. Oh, it's too late now. I don't want to buy it at the high. Well, we don't know it's the high. I mean, it's close to previous highs. You know, it could be 120 grand in, in July. I don't know, right? So uh, I, I don't want people to get discouraged thinking that they missed out or, oh, the price is too high. I don't have enough money. Well, we're, we're going to start a, an account with 5000 US dollars. At, we're near all-time highs, and we're just getting in. To show you, you can still make money despite not having a lot of money, maybe, and despite the market already had a big, big move. So we're going to talk about some of those strategies, and that's why that do this. So this is what we're going to do. We're not just going to pile in five grand and buy futures or something right now. That's kind of stupid. What if we get a 20% pullback? Completely happen, right? It's Bitcoin. Anything could happen. So uh, we're going to uh, dive into that stuff. As usual, hey, we're the Rogue Traders from the Rogue Trader Academy. Uh, you can check us out. We have uh, interactive live trade alerts uh, during the day. We do from discretionary accounts. We have a weekly Ask Me Anything call. A lot of fun. I uh, really enjoy that. Uh, we have educational content courses, and we do daily live streams. So what we're doing with you guys today and every Thursday, we do every day, except yesterday. We screwed up. I'm sorry, members. We're going to make up for that today. Uh, normally, every day, we're, we're doing that stuff, sometimes twice a day. Uh, occasionally even on the weekend if, if 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 it warrants it. But you get to see us uh, trade. And these are longer sessions. Sometimes they're 10 or 15 minutes, if not much is going on. Sometimes they're an hour. Uh, Rich and I really, really go deep on these calls. Uh, and this is going to be a, a little reflection of that, what we're doing uh, with everyone today. So without further ado, why don't I... To, 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 I'm going to turn this um, slides off. And I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Give me just a moment. I I, I don't have do. I'm at home today because my son is sick, so I'm in the, the home office. So let me just bring up screen share, and here we are. Okay, great. So what do we got? Well, here's ETH, man. ETH, 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 ETH. Good stuff. Good stuff. And I think there's a ton more. I, you know, hey, ETH and Bitcoin are often you know move in sympathy. They, they do have a strong correlation. ETH is going to have its day. ETH is the dog that's going to get to eat pretty soon because, you know, we all know the ETF is coming for it. We all know it. Yeah. 
it's, it's, it's nothing. And what's going to do? It's going to double in price, triple? I, I don't know. Who knows? I wouldn't be surprised to see ETH at 10 grand. Uh, you know, maybe it takes six months, maybe it takes a year and a half. I don't know. Who knows? But I, I wouldn't be surprised. So when we're, we're looking at the, uh, let's just take a look at a daily chart here. I know we can see this big, you know, all time highs right up here, on, you know, 4,800 or so. You know, we're in this zone where, where it previously kind of hit its head on before. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if we had a bit of a pullback, but if we punch through, you know, this is the next zone uh, before we start getting the new highs and all bets are off if ETF thing starts to happen because the inflows are going to start happening. Now we're going to have to do an analysis on that uh, versus who's holding, who's selling, who's mining, uh, the supply, all that type of stuff. But we don't need to get into that now. So it's pretty interesting stuff. Now, if I want to just go back to that four hour chart, just for a quick second here, and we look at this um, here, let me, let's just say I draw a simple, simple, simple trend line kind of from when it started going up, you know, sort of around here. Well, you know, even if there is a pullback, geez, you know, 31, 32, 3,300, you know, if it really pushed back down to three grand, I think those are huge buying opportunities. And I will be jumping all over those types of opportunities. Bitcoin, you know, same thing. It went past my unicorn, for God's sakes. It went past the unicorn. So I, I don't know. I don't even know where this unicorn needs to go. We're in price discovery mode. We can't go back and say, oh, you know, in 1987, this happened and that happened with this asset. Well, this is totally different. We have an asset with a limited supply. We don't know. Is, is the price of Bitcoin five grand? Is it 500 grand? I don't know. That's what this price discovery is going to find out. And there's not a lot of sellers. There's supply demand issues. So why can't it keep going up? I expect some, some shenanigans on the way up, but why not, right? So if I, if I zoom out, take a look at the daily chart. You know, same thing, right? We're, we're, we're looking at all-time highs right here. Pretty much uh, the same basics as the as the as the ETH chart, but you know, and we can also we can also go ahead and we can you know draw a very simple trend line from where it took off and say, all right, well, we're going up this way. I don't know. I mean, it, it pullbacks pullbacks into the fifties. You know, it went back down to fifty-seven, fifty-six, fifty-eight. I'm gonna be all over that. Yeah, I, I've got some further thoughts on that. If, if now's the time, yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's not just it's a limited supply asset. It's that at the moment, if you take yesterday's inflows into the US ETFs as a benchmark, and it's an arbitrary thing to do, but if you do, that was five hundred million dollars. Mm -hmm. um, uh, five hundred million dollars at today's price represents about eight thousand bitcoins per day. And if you assume that nobody else is buying or selling bitcoins, then today the miners are producing 900 bitcoin a day. So there's about nine to one ratio of demand versus supply, just purely on a purely supply side economics. Um, so if we assume that Wall Street investors will catch on and keep on allocating a tiny amount of their capital to bitcoin, and it's let's say 500 billion dollars a day, then actually before you get price equilibrium. Um, where the supply is matching demand, the price would have to rise to about $550 million. Sorry, I beg your pardon, $550,000. Um, don't get too excited. Hmm. Um, <clears throat> uh, of course, we've got a halving coming up in mid-April, mid, mid, mid -April, and the supply slashes to 450 a day. And I've had people ask me, what about the Mt. Gox inventory and what about mm -hmm. the uh, Galaxy liquidation and so on? And I've, I've actually done a spreadsheet and figured that out. And if you assume that those will be fed into the market over a year, then all those do is increase the supply by 10% mm. of Bitcoin. So mm. it's absolutely relevant. Drop um, in the bucket. So our, our thesis at the moment is that the risk uh, is very much on the upside. Mm. Uh, until there is some macroeconomic event that makes it uncomfortable to allocate 1% or 5% of your money into Bitcoin for uh, fund participants on Wall Street, um, uh, and we can come into that in later episodes because that's definitely something we've got to, we've got to plan for. Um, our, our thesis is the upside risk is much more than the downside risk. And actually, you talked about the trend line and all that stuff. And my thesis is that none of that matters anymore. I um, agree. I completely agree. Uh, because at some point, at some point, the shorts are going to just get uh, swept, yep. and the order books will be empty. And then we're, then we are truly into price discovery. The price will be whatever anyone chooses to sell at. Yeah. Um, 
and I don't want to freak anyone out, but there's a danger on the markets of the, the, the market makers maybe not being able to maintain an orderly liquid market uh, uh, or uh, kind of cut, touch and go and, and making it extremely volatile. Um, and and at, at its extreme, um, something we'll touch on later again in a separate episode is, is I mean, Derek runs a, an insurance fund. And that insurance fund currently runs at something like eight or 900 Bitcoins. Um, mm -hmm. This is purely in the Bitcoin market. Um, and that's to cover the losses of people who cannot pay uh, their, their, if they get liquidated and, they, and they can't, their, their account doesn't cover, then Deribit will step in with the insurance fund. Um, I can actually foresee, uh, and I, I've gone from being a Bitcoin uh, skeptic last mm -hmm. year, uh, of you know, this, is a, this is bullshit, um, it flashed in the pan, to being very concerned that um, I've been utterly wrong. Mm -hmm. I'm about to be proved utterly wrong. Um, and for a short period of time, uh, history will be made in the same probably way as carry shell bubbles were made and uh, peppercorn bubbles and, and aluminium and, and tulips and pineapples also was another bubble. Um, but nevertheless, these bubbles matter because if you're not in them, um, you're, you're, you suddenly find that you're much poorer than all your friends. Mm -hmm. And if you're in them too long, you find that you're much poorer than all your friends, right? So, <laughs> <laughs> you got to keep up with the Joneses. It, it, so we, it, so yeah. we, um, yeah. So, so our sort of working thesis is that we ride this baby to half a million dollars a Bitcoin, maybe even a million, uh, and not get hosed on the way up or on the way down. <laughs> and 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 we, and we have specific strategies how we're going to do that. So. Yeah. Uh, like we wanted to define some parameters for this account. We haven't done it yet, but I think by next week we will. Richard and I are going to decide, do we want to 10X it? Do we want to do this? Do we want to do that? We want to tr try to put some parameters on it. Whether we reach it or not, we'll see. But we want to be uh, very sp as specific as possible, uh, including on how we, we were, do we want to run the risk super hot all the time and just constantly be fretting margin? Maybe sometimes <laughs> we do that. Other times we want to back right off and uh, you'll kind of see all of that. So, you know what, Marcus, he says, I'll take 10 K ETH and you sound bullish. It's funny because you were always a skeptic. And well, I think we were talking before the call and we were talking about how you used to sell puts in order to accumulate Bitcoin until it plunged below 30 K. And you were like, screw this. I don't know. You know this thing could be worth zero. Um, you know, hindsight is always 20, 20, but, it's a different situation we're in now, completely different situation than, than anything we've ever seen before. So I think we have to be prepared for things that we've never seen before um, and just never be surprised by the market. All right. So uh, let's let's move on. Uh, I think what we should do now is uh, so we've got this brand new fresh account. <laughs> we've It's been unsoiled by us. Uh, it's got some USDC in there. Um, around 5k ish. Uh, let's why don't we share the screen? Why don't we allocate that money so you guys will see the process of how you take the, uh, the USDC? Yep. Put the actually, what, what, yeah, as you, this, is, this is the spot chart, um, mm -hmm. on Derabit. And as you can see, since you've been jabbering, we've you've already lost us 100 bucks. Um, oh, jeez. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, <laughs> So, um, can have some coffee. yeah. So, and so, what I'm talking about here is if, you, if we look at the perpetuals market, right? Um, actually, you know, you know what? Let's convert the money first. Um, and I'm not going to. Well, there's a there's a massive spread here, but you know what? I I'm just going to convert it at market. Um, yeah, we only got a half hour, Richard. Yeah. Okay. Uh, That's the so other we, thing I'll mention is if you watch our live streams, <laughs> a lot of times we're waiting for fills, so we're often <laughs> flying the market, so we don't want people to wait too long. But that's something we're probably going to do on this show too. Is where you know maybe in other accounts we might wait to get filled on the offer of the bid. When we're doing this, we'll probably just cross the spread uh, just because. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to cross, and, and uh, I'm just trying to find a number that Terabit will accept because unfortunately they, they don't have a like a trade max you can do number. Um, mm -hmm. So, bam! Ah, oh, come on. And thank you for the kind words of Vladimir for my son. Yes, he's fine. He's just. Um, Usual all right, well, let's do fifty-two hundred dollars and leave a hundred bucks uh, lying around. Hundred bucks. All right. There's that hundred okay. bucks that uh, I wasted earlier. Oh yeah, <laughs> we'll yeah. keep that in reserve. Well, that, that'll that'll be a thousand bucks. Unless it goes to forty-two, then we'll use it to buy some more. All right, so so we are we are long zero point zero eight 
bitcoins which doesn't uh, you know uh, uh, not too long ago this would have bought us almost half a bitcoin but um, <laughs> here it is <clears throat> um and so what our thesis is uh, so i just want to quickly cover off um what i'm talking about here you see that you see the the order ladder the bids the buys and sells right so everyone here who's selling a put is actually committing to, to essentially deliver you cash flows against a bitcoin and everyone who's buying a perp is essentially looking to deliver cash in order to buy a bitcoin um and what i want you to imagine happens is if we if bitcoin runs up to say sixty five thousand today sixty eight thousand tomorrow seventy five thousand the next day eighty thousand the next day at some point um the sellers of these um perps on not just on deribit but on all markets are going to say wait a minute uh we don't want to commit to here and even though there are market maker agreements in place market makers might break the rules and say you know what we we don't want to sell at eighty-five thousand. we want to sell at 90,000 or whatever um or even actually it's going up too fast just pull pull the orders and one day what what i'm concerned happens is that um all these orders just get pulled um across all the exchanges because in the end it's the same bunch of market makers making markets everywhere um and so suddenly there's offers there's bids in the market but no offers at which point uh, you know wh whoever posts a price offers a price that's the price across the world and you'll see a yeah. you may see a what people call a god candle where it goes from say seventy five thousand dollars to one hundred and fifty thousand dollars overnight or even even in one tick um at which point uh people who are short a lot of people who are short are going to get liquidated and there'll be a call on bitcoins to be delivered and then we'll see who's got enough bitcoins to deliver and we'll, then we'll, we'll get into delays because of lawsuits and all the rest of it um so what we want to do is profit from that but also not take so much risk that uh, we ignore the fact that even if we win um that we might it might take a time for us to get paid and we might not get paid 100 cents on the dollar um because if we get a god candle from 150 to 600 you can be sure that we're not going to get uh 100 cents for every dollar that we should that we should be getting uh, or, or 100 bitcoins for every bitcoin we, you know um, so we just need to be mindful that we need to be able to weather the downside risks we might not get as much as of the upside as we expect to get and we need to live to fight another day through the realities of market trading as well as the um the theoretical uh, gains so our thesis, I think, Shane, is that we see 45,000 prices as a, as a dis distant memory in Bitcoin. Is that I fair? Think, I think it'll be unlikely it gets there. Anything can happen, but uh, yeah. yeah. Um, and in fact, so I think we even think 55,000 is probably an unlikely scenario from now on. Um, so what I'm what I'm proposing, or what I propose to, to Shane, is that we actually look to sell some put spreads Mm -hmm. to fund some uh, calls. Yeah, we're, we're uh, going to buy we... some risk reversals. Yep. We're going to buy risk reversals, but we're going to cover our puts. As a spread, yeah. As a spread, because if we do, if the market does move down, we want some leeway in terms of margin to be able to manage mm -hmm. that. And we also want to do this as a, at a credit, because mm -hmm. we actually want to increase the number of Bitcoins on the account. Yeah. Um, and because... I think that's our goal. Like Sometimes we'll be looking to increase the, the, the USDC value, but I think, or, or US dollar value, but I think that for the most part, we want to accumulate Bitcoins at this point because of our, our thesis of where, you know, and most people think Bitcoins going to continue going up, right? Yeah. So. And so, and so, so remember, remember, if you will, that um, uh, uh, Der Deribit options are what's the, what they call inverse options. They, they pay in Bitcoin, even though they're quoted in dollars. Um, and that's kind of useful for us because it means that if we receive premium for selling a put, we're receiving it in Bitcoin, which automatically adds to our, our, our dollar delta. Um, so it makes us longer. So yeah. even if we break even on the trade, we've put we've put in, in dollar terms we've put um, bitcoins on the account, um, which is our aim at the moment. So, so uh, one thing I'll quickly quickly mention here is that you know a lot of people use a strategy of selling cash secured puts. If, if you know in the stock market they want to accumulate uh, the underlying, they'll, they'll sell a put. If they get assigned on that, they're very happy to take possession of that. We're sort of looking at this in the same way. Now there are maybe we'll be you know the market moving up aggressively. We'll be selling puts fairly close to the money. Uh, then the market reverses. We may choose to roll 
those puts. Some of those puts we might not roll. We might let them expire even if they're near the money, in the money, um, and then roll out another one after or, or, or resell that again. We're happy to accumulate Bitcoin at certain strikes. Yep. Yeah. Sorry, we only have 10 minutes. So do we want to put some, let's put some trades on right now. So our thesis, it, let me just sum it up then. So we want to accumulate more Bitcoin. We're yep. starting with a 5K account, brand new. We're at near all-time highs. And we're going to do so right now, starting by, by, by buying risk reversals, but the puts are covered. So a risk reversal, if you're buying it, is you're, you're, you're selling a put and you're using the proceeds of that to buy a call. Okay. In this case, though, we're we're buying a put as well to protect the downside. We want to do this for our credit. Um, we're going to incorporate other strategies. Sometimes we're going to do one by threes. We'll be selling calls. We'll look to disperse those calls. But we're going to, I think, time the market for those types of things. We're not just going to, you know, every week, you know, sell a one by three. I think we're going to look at the right time where we feel the market might have exhausted. Let's do a one by three. Okay. And if those 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 three short calls, so one by three, buying one call and paying for it by selling three and getting a credit, if we blast up, we've got that 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 the, the, the strength of the of the one long call, those three long three short calls we're going to disperse into strangles or puts or whatever we're going to do depending on the market condition. So we're going to get in some other strategies uh, in following episodes, but let's just start with with buying the risk reversal. So that was kind of long winded. Yeah, so so here we are. Um, um, now, unfortunately, I was hoping to be able to buy a strike higher than $120. This is for the end of March. It's one month away. Mm. Quite amazing, right, that there's $120,000 being shown. I actually feel it would be nice if we could buy one at $150,000 because this this is uh, 8 Delta mm. um, uh, and trading at 80, 88 vol, 88%. Extraordinary, vol. extraordinary. Uh, Sorry, that's eighty-seven percent away. It's trading at one hundred and two vol. Um, yeah, it's a, it's is, like a two delta, isn't it? Ah, <clears throat> uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, you're right. Uh, yeah, uh, gross yeah. delta is two. Yeah. Okay, that's that's cool. Two delta is fine. So I'm I'm happy to buy this. I'm happy to pay a hundred vol for this. But how am I going to fund this? Well, if we look at fifty-five, is quite aggressive. Um, Maybe even go lower, right? Uh, so we didn't want to buy something closer to the money in this case. Because a lot I, of times when we do risk reversals, we'll buy something near the money. Like, uh, and this, this is what we do on our live stream. You mean, you mean sell right? the process. Uh, uh, no, no, because I think I think the game here is we want to collect premium because we, we want yep. the Bitcoin on our book, yep. right? Uh, and we also want a outside chance that we make a, a shed load of money, mm. right? But we don't want to bet the farm we don't want to bet all this month's gains that we're, we're going to see the god candle this month because we might not mm. so what i'm saying we do is we sell a, a put spread that brings us some net net income yeah and then with some of that premium proceeds we buy the call so we, yeah yes i just thought we were we we're going to start off buying a call a little closer to the money but uh, uh well but i'm okay, but they, I'm okay they, with they, those yeah, yeah go ahead yeah they get expensive fast and yeah, thank you it was um, ridiculous. Yeah. And, and the thing is, you know, this thesis, this thesis only works if Bitcoin like doubles. Yeah. Yeah. You know, within the month. Well, yeah. if Bitcoin doubles from here, you'll see that the money vols go up to 80, 90. Yeah. And you'll see that the wing vols going up to 140, 50, 50 or more. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and this 19 will suddenly be worth like 300. Yeah. And, and one thing I'll just mention for people too is uh, if it doesn't go up, let's just say it, it, it farts about you know in a, in a five thousand dollar range for you know until April, uh, we're still collecting a credit. Yep, that's the that's the point. So we're we're, we're getting this upside for, essentially for free. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so the question is, what strikes are we happy on the downside, or are we, what are we prepared to stomach being a floor for Bitcoin in the next month? You know, and and the, the annoying thing is when we look at these strikes on the puts is that <laughs> they're not worth much. You know, well, uh, you know, we, we look at the skew, so it's a little, a little bit. Um, well, vols yeah, have that's... expanded; they're, they're worth a lot more, but uh, in comparison, I, I, I think mid fifties. If we can do mid fifties, I, I can't quite see the the strike. All right, so fifty two k is one hundred and forty basis points. We could probably get one thirty five, and then forty seven to cover it would get us would cost us sixty quite a lot okay. so we'd receive a 50 or 60 credit yeah and we'd be spending 21 on the on the call spread let's do it 
Uh, gentle yeah. way to ease into this account. Should we, should we go in maybe at 53 rather than 52? Go I'm happy to do 55, but let's do it. 55, screw it. Okay, we'll go, we'll go to 55. We'll do 0.1. So because we've roughly got, we've got roughly one Bitcoin on one point one Bitcoin on our account. Mm. And I'm I'm gonna be doing this um just manually putting the, the legs in separately today. Um and then later on we'll we'll go into using the the um combo screen. Combo screen dofo, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Next week we'll we'll definitely set up a, a, a trade there so you guys can see yeah. how that works. Yeah. So how about fifty fifty five fifty? I think it's Tem good. so we're taking ten percent risk here. Yeah. yeah. Risking ten percent of our Bitcoin. Um of course no one's filling us. And then on the one twenty we'll we'll go and we'll buy the one twenty. It seems so absurd, you know. It, it, but uh, you know, especially compared to like the summer, you know, we had the doldrums. And can you imagine yeah. we're buying one twenty calls? What do you uh, mean? Oh, no, no, we, we, oh, we all got filled. Yeah. We got filled on our on our mids. Nice, Beauty. very nice. Uh, markets are busy right now. Yeah. Okay, so um, that's it. And so the margin use is is eleven percent. Yep. Um, so it's you know kind of not too bad. Um, it's fine. Uh, and then we've got our massive upside candle thing in, and we can probably do another little trade. We could probably do this sort of 55, 550 on one week as well, just to yeah. bring in an extra couple of bips. I don't know if we get much for it one week, but let's see what the what the premiums look like. I think you'd be surprised, right? Um, 55, you've received 64, okay. and you pay 22. You've received 40, 40 basis points. 40 basis points for a week is, is sure. what? 11 basis points a day, that's like 50% a year. Interest. Yep. Let's do it. Uh, should we do it? Yep, let's do it. Um, so we'll sell that. Um, and then we'll buy that. All right. Um, we'll let that we'll let that stew and fill. Um, we might have to go down to 60 and up to 24. All right. So today uh, we're almost at the end of our time. So we're not going to get into some of the analytics. And, you know what? We'll, we'll... Uh, the next time we see everyone is going to be a week, a week's time, right? So screw it. I'll cross the spread. Okay. Um, what, what we're going to do? If I have to emergency trade it I, in the week, I will. But we'll tell you what we've done. Yeah. Um, so uh, and so, what we've done here is we've sold for sixty basis points and we've paid twenty-one basis points. So we've got net thirty-nine basis points for um, seven and a half days of risk. Next um, Twelve and a half percent away from from in the, in the market. But and the only reason I'm doing this one sided is because we believe strongly that the market's more likely to go up than down. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so if I can just show you the wallet, um, Bitcoin now is, uh, oh, what did uh, you show the, the uh, PNL? Where's the PNL thing? Yeah. There. There it is. I wonder if it doesn't record, it doesn't record, uh, it doesn't record it on a, oh, here we go. Yeah, here it is on the, on the right hand side. This is, this is us. Uh, buying just lift your screen up a bit higher. I think our faces might be in, in... there, there it is. Yeah. Oh, there it is. Okay. Uh, account value. Uh, so there we are. There's our account value going from zero. Uh, oh yeah, that's money going in. Okay, uh, okay. So I, no, I was hoping that we'd see like the little uptick of the premium going on, but of mm. course we, 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 we've done it all in the same day. But the, we we converted that. Um, in fact, I can look at the transaction log. So, sorry, guys. Um, uh, so there's the Bitcoin USD. Um, the end of that, we balance was 0.825, and then we bought the um, outlier. Uh, so we sold the put, bought the call, um, bought the cover, sold the uh, our marches are filled as well. So you can see that we started the day uh, with 0 0.0825 bitcoins. We currently have 0 0.08. Three eight bitcoins. So we've already added a little bit of Bitcoin um, to our balance, and you know we strongly believe that that balance will go up in value. Mm. Um, and uh, um, and of course, if we're right, then all, then all, all those puts will go worthless, and that one twenty k call might go worthless, or it might get it might be there might be a gold candle. We'll see. Yeah. So one thing I will mention is uh, you know next week when we come back look at the account we'll see what trades we've done we're also going to be looking a lot more deeply at the various metrics uh, Greeks and some of the tools that we use through one of our partners Immersive Finance uh, in conjunction with Deribit's tools to really analyze what's going on and it helps us in our decision making um, okay so uh, I've got a couple of quick questions here. Um, 
Uh, one question disappeared. I'm not sure where that went. I'll put it, I'll put it into Q&A. Oh, okay. Sorry. Soren asks, can you sell it for something <clears throat> more liquid and cash that? Um, I, th I think he's talking. Uh, it was much earlier in the call that was posted. So I forget what we were talking. Sorry, ask us another question with, with some more detail because I'm lost as to what. Yeah, what you were, right. I was referring to at the time. Okay, well, so you can put that, that put that in again if you, if you if you don't mind, and then in the meantime, uh, or, or sorry, and in the meantime we'll go to Peter's question. Short covered calls on debit position metric debit. number one displayed delta shows the naked value, so the BTC ETH holdings have to manually get factored in. But what about okay, gamma? So, yeah. Okay, so first of all, the the manually factoring you don't have to do. You can just select net delta. Yep. Uh, and if you look at the um, uh, the settings in the risk, where the hell is it? Net delta, here we go. Um, so you see we've got a delta of 0 0.02 and a, and a net delta of 0 0.02 um, because we're not in the money and the, and the, the Bitcoin value don't, doesn't matter. But what this net delta is doing is that it's actually subtracting the delta of the Bitcoin um, premium represented by the value of the option um, which gives you a, a sort of a true delta um, if you're thinking in terms of bitcoin so your delta is in, is in terms of if you're hedging into dollars and your net delta is, is if you're hedging into bitcoins at the moment our account is very similar uh, what about gamma uh, i don't think darabit shows you net gamma um, uh, I, I use a tool as as um, shane mentioned called immersive finance which we'll showcase at some point. Um, uh, and in fact, that firm is owned by a friend of mine. Um, and uh, that allows you to see your risk, your full risk in terms of dollars or in terms of underlying uh, as you wish or both um, mm -hmm. and run various scenarios over it. And, ju and just so people have some context to that, the, the, the question was, you know, what are the best strategies, tactics to manage a hedge gamma? Um, so for example, short call campaign, in my understanding, if delta neutral but leveled, leveraged, uh, it's probably gamma that will blow you up on some vol shocks. Any ideas on this? Yeah, your intuition is correct. Gamma is dangerous. Um, so, uh, you, and the, you um, you can kind of successfully gamma hedge generally just by periodically setting your delta to zero um, using you know using the appropriate trades in futures and i would suggest trading in futures more than perps at the moment because perps funding is so high uh, unless you're going south um uh but actually the biggest risk in bitcoin is not gamma is actually vega uh the sensitivity to vol particularly if you're short vol um and actually one of the reasons that we cover this trade um here is not actually to limit the loss because we don't believe in a month of Sundays that Bitcoin's going down below 50k again. Um, well, until the Fed intervenes and uh, all bets are off, but that's, that, that's, gonna, that's a couple of years away. Um, we do this because actually it controls for gamma. If, if the market does get down here, people are going to be feeling pressured. They're going to be forced to buy puts back. It's going to be forcing prices up. Um, uh, sorry, Vega. And, and that means vol will, vol, implied vol will rise. And I've seen implied vols go from 70 to 300. And you can and you can mentally imagine that that's thinking think about that in terms of four times the price uh, while being at the money. So it means going from say two one six basis points to six 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 times four. The number of the beast. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, and so and if you're not covered, that get, gets really unpleasant really fast. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. If you're covered, you've got at least some protection against the Vega. Yeah. Uh, there's a whole bunch of other Vega hedging stuff you could do. We we do a whole thing about that in our courses, but. Um, yeah, and another thing too, it's a nice habit to get into for that reason. And also, you're going to see us doing a lot in order to manage margin uh, as we start to really build out this into a, a book of options. You know, this is just the first steps to get <clears> started. <throat> a quick question from Vladimir: uh, Maybe because you're thinking that we are going extreme bullish, that it's reasonable to buy calls and sell higher calls to cover fees and loan leave uh, some Bitcoin as a profit. Yes. And, you know, that's what I was talking about with those one by two, one by threes. Sometimes I'll also sell a put as part of that package uh, yeah. in order to finance the, the purchase of that call. Well, I think what we were saying there at the beginning, Vladimir, is that um, we're just not going to, you, we're not going to systematically say, oh, every week we're going to sell a strangler or every week we're going to do this if it involves selling calls because we're very um, sensitive to upside price shocks and I think that when we do sell calls, we're going to um, 
probably pick and choose our shots when we want to do it. Yeah. Um, uh, and and um, also, if you're selling, if, if you're planning to um, do trades like call spreads and, and, and one by twos and so on, these things rely on markets being orderly and uh you know and, and saying okay look a 10 percent up is reasonable but a 25 percent up is not reasonable therefore i'll sell 10 buy the 10 percent up and sell the 25 percent up mm. um but i i'm actually uh, i'm not concerned about that i know people are bullish but i, I actually having done the, the maths on on the flows I've, what i've become is actually particularly against the backdrop of the fed playing funny funny you know and and us i think the us treasury needs to sell 17 billion trillion dollars of dollars of treasuries this year to just cover all the deficits and, and the interest seven trillion of its interest um people are losing faith in the u.s economy and th th that might be right or wrong doesn't matter people are losing faith in the u.s economy so they're looking for alternatives and we've just had bitcoin appear in wall street uh, being offered by every, every cfa in in the u.s or 80 percent of 80 percent of them who are, who are suggesting to their clients that they at least put one percent of their money in bitcoin right yeah. So, I'm what I'm afraid of is not you know fast markets going up and me profiting from the get from the, the spread, but I'm, what I'm worried about is actually markets just get disorderly, yeah. and yeah. we we get massive wicks that that. Yeah. So I, I you know actually one thing we we should do here. Well, uh, we saw a five thousand dollar candle yesterday, didn't we? Down candle. Exactly. Yeah, up and down wick, uh, and that's going to become more common, I think. Um, yeah. And so, you know, we, I, I'd be quite comfortable to, to put in a sell order on this um, 120,000 at like, I don't know, 0. 0.5 of a Bitcoin. Because who knows? I might get up. hit. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, up. yeah. You might be I'm the only one in the market. I, I might be the only one in the market. I might get swept because someone's panicking, you know. Yeah. Um, and I think it's going to be those kind of markets uh, uh, going. I think it's likely that we see those kind of markets going forward. So I'm extremely careful about calls and if i do do calls it's got to be an even number of, more cover than cover than calls yeah. so i'd only be doing bidding calls in a, in a like a funded one by three or one by two kind of scenario and, going, and as, you, as you're going to say going forward as, as we build this book out it's going to become a, a full-on book and strikes are going to get and expires are going to get filled up with positions you're going to see other tactics we use to deal with in the money short calls we're not always just rolling we've talked about that before there's other things we can do uh, to hedge those off so um it'll be interesting to watch that develop and again if anybody wants to see us do this every day uh, you, you can you can always subscribe uh, to our, our patreon and um join join that live stream or of course join the road trader academy but uh, hey, we went over time. I apologize, but but you know, hey, we were setting the account up. First steps, you know, lots to talk. I mean, I guess we always have lots to talk about. To be perfectly honest, but this is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, any questions uh, about this type of stuff, or you have questions, uh, you know, you want to talk about for next week? If you have your own strategies that you're trying to deploy, and you want to ask us questions about it, why we don't do it, whatever, you know, feel free to ask those types of things. Uh, you know, we're always open to ideas, and uh, we've got certain reasons for doing what we're doing. Uh, a lot of it is based on back testing and, and as Richard said, the maths we run and the tools we use on Deribit and immersive finance. So I'm going to shut it down. Any last thoughts there, Richard? Sorry, yeah, sorry yeah, just just one. Uh, so, uh, sorry, and you said uh, in case BTC shoots up and you cannot get cashed 100%. Uh, look, I think I think if we get in a position where um, Deribit counterparties can't cover all their liabilities 100%, every other exchange is going to be in the same place and every other asset is going to be in the same place. Um, so I don't think there is anything more liquid than than Bitcoin. And Hans, uh, very very sorry, yep. we we've kind of rushed through because we're trying to get a lot done in our first episode. So next week, um, uh, please join us again, and we will go through the trades we do much slower because we'll we'll have a lot less to do. And maybe what we could do, good, good point there, Hans, on the, the the mouse being hard to follow. I think you can make your mouse bigger. Um, maybe, maybe we'll do that to make it a little bit more visible to see what we're doing. Uh, yeah. And hopefully that. And, and again, Hans, you can always check out the replay. This video will be on Deribit's YouTube channel, uh, and it's also going to be on the Rogue Trader YouTube channel. And of course, you can watch it and slow it down, stop, zoom in, whatever you need to do uh, to uh, to suck it all up, so so you, so you don't miss anything. All right, uh, yeah, ten X guys. If Vladimir says yes, ten X, maybe even a hundred X. I don't know. We'll see. Let's not get too greedy here. Jump ahead of ourselves, but I'm super. Uh, super I, it takes up. it takes a very um, it's very difficult to, to retrain your brain to under to feel to think to think that um, yes because it hasn't happened before you won't see it you won't see it in the future 
yeah. but I actually do feel that we're in uncharted territory. We've never had a, well, the last time there was an asset like this that was believed to be limited supply was in 1760 or, so, or thereabouts, when a trading ship landed on an island and discovered what we now call carry shells and brought them back to England uh, and sold them. And it was, the rumour got around that there was only one island that, that had these shells on the beach. And so a massive race went, got, you know, uh, business got in, under play to get out there and harvest as many of these shells as possible and sell them in the London markets. And the prices went like, you know, 50x. Um, and people went mental for them, just like they're doing for Bitcoin, right? Um, and the only thing is that back then, someone else unfortunately discovered another island also covered in shells and then another one and, and then they realized that there wasn't it wasn't a limited supply that these things grew uh, all the time but bitcoin isn't, isn't even like that it's absolutely limited supply um and so short of interventions from fed or whatever um i, th I think it's likely that there'll be a yeah. uncontrollable feeding frenzy yeah and you know one thing i will say this i've been trained for a long time euphoria is more dangerous than fear you know so if we're all like yeah. yes yes well you know what things might not go like we planned or it might take a different route there that that screws people over it's like oh if this didn't happen that we have to be reasonable it, it may not do what we think it's going to do uh you know maybe 68 will be <laughs> it's high and never go above but we don't think so just because of the mechanics of the market and as andre just just mentioned here you said you know i've seen bitcoin going 20x in a year or two so it's nothing new to him um let's just be we've got to be reasonable we've got to be traders we've got our bias for us it's new we normally never have a market bias we're, we're usually agnostic about things and i prefer that this is an interesting territory for us which only happens in bubbles it only happens for short periods of time for certain assets and certain conditions and this is one of those times we're still going to be guarded about it uh to hear a question or or, or a comment the fonts are very small can they be increased yeah, we probably could, but we kind of need to see the entire screen. It would be a little bit tough, I think, for us to go too much bigger. Uh, but we'll, we'll do our best. Again, you can always watch the replay. Would probably be the best thing. Uh, but but we'll do our best. Uh, sorry, uh, what we were going way over time, uh, but I, I don't want to let any um, uh, questions go unanswered here. Also, what is your buying power? Well, we uh, we put how much in there? Uh, Fifty two hundred. Right, fifty three hundred. Yeah, but the thing is, uh, Deribit doesn't work in terms of buying power. It just it works in terms of margin use. So our, the positions we we are holding are consuming a certain amount of margin. Um, and you, you can uh, see yeah. the margin on the top of the screen in white, yeah. right beside the SM. Yeah, right there. Yeah. So so yeah. you can see currently we're using point uh, zero two two nine of our Bitcoin as maintenance margin. Uh, sorry, uh, additional margin. So 0 0.0179 is our as, uh, maintenance margin, which represents 21.42% um, of our equity. So our, our buying power is currently 5x, what we, what we have, if you like. Okay. All right. I think that's a, that, that's a wrap. Uh, and I, just, I just want to reiterate. So we're, yeah. we're doing nothing clever here. All we're doing is assuming that Bitcoin's going to go up, or at least not down. And we're looking to just chip away and get a few more Bitcoins out of the market at super low risk that's all we're trying to do here right and we earned a credit with this first trade if it does go down, let's say it goes down to 53 ah and everybody panics well you know what we're okay with that because we like picking it up with our short um, strike price uh, yeah I'll, I'll, I'll treat that as us, us buying bitcoin at 55 when i when i could have ordered it at 60. yeah so happy okay. Again, there's a lot of moving parts. Uh, you're going to see it all. And it's just going to slowly develop as we go through each episode. And uh, I hope there's lots of questions. And again, if you want to join us every day for these for these chats we have, where we usually go a lot longer and even make some jokes from time to time, uh, <laughs> please do so. Join us at roguetrader.academy or check us out on Patreon. That's it for today. Thanks, everyone. This is going to be super exciting. I'm, I'm, I'm really happy, and, and I think it's going to be a lot of fun for us. And uh, let's go Bitcoin, right? All right. See you next week. <laughs>